Hello, Vicky. Uh, well, so welcome back once again uh, to the discussion. And a lot has happened in Afghanistan. Uh, I think we spoke a couple, I think last week itself. And a lot has happened. And uh, there are rumors that uh, as of when we are recording this uh, uh, sort of in uh, podcast. So uh, within a few hours, Afghanistan is going to uh, formally, Taliban basically is going to formally announce their government there. And there are a lot of rumor mills that are going around. And But one thing is for sure that they're going to adopt the uh, Iranian uh, uh, school of thought when it goes to, you know, choosing their government and uh, there would be supreme leader and then there would be president and all those kind of things will be there. But what uh, the premise of this whole discussion is that that uh, Al-Qaeda, basically the uh, outfit that was the main reason because of which United States infiltrated uh, I will say, I will use the word, I will be bold enough to say the word infiltrated. Uh, they did not liberate, uh, as they, as Joe Biden has said, that they have liberated uh, Afghanistan. They didn't do anything like that. It is back to square one, what it was in 2001. So they basically went there, infiltrated, uh, tried to wash out all of Al-Qaeda. But Al-Qaeda is still there. They came back, they said that, uh, you know, uh, the way that uh, Taliban has, uh, you know, recaptured Afghanistan shows the might uh, uh, of jihad, the Islamic jihad, and that is the way move forward. And they uh, have said that, you know, uh, Taliban should now work in terms of liberating other oppressed uh, Islamic states, uh, and they also mentioned Kashmir. So that is the biggest concern now. Al Qaeda now directly taking names of Kashmir and saying that we, this is our next target. So what, how do you see this? Uh, okay, uh, see, now this is a very uh, dangerous message, you know, that you, uh, so, you know, trying to send out in a democratic world, basically. As you know, in the past, we have discussed also, and, uh, you know, I have also uh, said, Akash, that, you know, uh, the Taliban victory, you know, it's not just, you know, a normal victory. It is a moral victory, you know. It just says that, you know, you can actually, you know, hang out for 20 years and, you know, still managed to, you know, take back the country, you know, and then, you know, de uh, de uh, declare an Islamic, uh, a kind of a uh, Islamic country, the Islamic Emirate, what they are uh, talking about. See, the problem is, you know, these uh, things start uh, creating a problem. That is one thing. I'm not even, you know, trying to doubt our agencies or our security forces. You know, we are very, very capable of tackling an Al-Qaeda threat. Because, you know, they have been, you know, in uh, in pockets, you know, they've been parts of, you know, the, the, you know those... Uh, irritational uh, value, which I would call it, you know, whether be it in the form of a base movement in uh, Kerala or, you know, uh, uh, be it in Kashmir, you know, a lot of disgruntled people from uh, Hezbollah Mujahideen joined this outfit, all this thing. They've not gained the traction, but it's just because they've not gained the traction, that does not mean, you know, that, you know, you set your eyes off them or something like that, because, you know, they've spoken about many countries, you know, Yemen, Palestine, the Levant, all these uh, places they have spoken about. Now, the thing is, what has to be seen is that, you know, whether these people can, you know, sit and motivate, you know, their cadres, you know, who are already down, you know, post the death of Osama bin Laden, they were already down. That is one part of it. And more importantly, to see that, you know, uh, Al-Qaeda was such an ally of the Taliban, one thing, you know, Taliban uh, faced the mess from the US uh, only because of the Al-Qaeda. So, whether, you know, the Taliban would back them, or, you know, uh, or, you know, would they, you know, stay independent, you know, as per their, you know, Doha agreement uh, with the United States when they said that, you know, we will not let uh, our soil be used uh, for any kind of, you know, terror purposes, you know, on uh, third country. So it's a very you know, critical, uh, this one, because as I said that, at least another two or three months, everything will start becoming clear. That is uh, one thing. So, Al-Qaeda also speaking of that, I mean, I know for a fact that, you know, ISI does not let the Al-Qaeda operate, you know, in such, you know, gusto in uh, Jammu and Kashmir and they would still, you know, continue to send in their Jaisha Mohammeds and Hezbollahs and, you know, Lashkars into that. Whether the Al-Qaeda will be able to gain that, you know, required traction or not is one question, but... If the Taliban decides to back them and, you know, and Taliban, you know, on one hand says that, you know, this Kashmir is an internal issue. And then, you know, on the other hand, they are, you know, trying to say that we will raise it. And when they say we will raise this issue, they are trying to say like, you know, how it is raised by all other countries on different uh, platforms. But the danger would be is that, you know, letting these groups, you know, kind of regroup there. And, you know, if Lashkar-e-Taiba or Jaisha Mohammed or Al-Qaeda starts, you know, using Afghan soil, 
you know, to, you know, start launching attacks in India. It is going to be a double whammy because that is one thing is that, you know, they have a perfect launching pad. And the next thing is they are giving Pakistan all the deniability that they need at the end of it. All the deniability, you know, say that this was not launched from our soil at all, you know. So this is the long-standing data. Yeah, exactly. And and then you put the very, uh, the, the point that I was coming up to next, that was like, uh, on one hand, the Taliban is saying that we are not going to raise, uh, that Kashmir is an internal matter for uh, for India. Uh, and it, it should be resolved between India and Pakistan. But on the other hand, when you go on a TV debate, on a TV interview, your spokesperson are saying that, you know, we will raise this issue. So as of now, uh, Taliban, the government has not been formed. It has not been, uh, you know, uh, recognized by any of the governments, uh, uh, be it uh, even by China or even by Russia also. I'm not that pretty sure about it. I think diplomatically, uh, you know, recognize them as an organization that is ruling because there has been no government. So they, there is nobody to talk to. First of all, so that is one point. And then secondly, if they're going to raise the issue, what is, uh, what do you think would be the point of raising the issue? Because it is an, because it, it is India's internal matter. We have removed Article 370. It has no special status anymore. It is a, it is a union territory which falls under India now. So how come you know an organization like Taliban is going to raise an issue? See the tone and tenor of this, you know, exact uh, this uh, this particular Taliban. If you look at it, uh, Akash, the thing is, you know, they are trying to, you know, be a very, uh, I mean, a very progressive. A uh, lot of people, you know, they're trying to say it is not going to be uh, Taliban Taliban 1.0. The Taliban 2.0 is uh, uh, said to be something uh, very different. And uh, while on one hand they say that you know we will not uh, interfere in Kashmir because it is India's internal matter. Now, the thing is, uh, what happens is, you know, I found, I found that statement a little, uh, you, you know, ki kind of amusing when they said, you know, we will raise this on these forums. They are trying to behave like a typical country, basically. That is one thing, you know, that we will raise these issues, but it is an internal issue. Ultimately, India and Pakistan will have to sort it out, etc. And also, let's not forget, there's one more thing is that, you know, the Pakistan hand in all this, you know, suddenly Al-Qaeda are raising this issue and suddenly, you know, Taliban. It's not like they're going to let them keep quiet about it. So, you know, go make some, you know, right or wrong noises, uh, whatever, it, it, you know, uh, whatever it may mean. So, you know, on that level, if you look at it, Taliban will keep speaking about it. But as I said, one thing is that, honestly speaking, whether they are going to, you know, respect that, you know, that this is completely our internal issue or not, is going to be seen in the fact whether they let their soil be used, uh, you know, uh, be, I mean, let, uh, will they give up their soil to... These groups like uh, JM and LET, etc., to launch attacks on our soil. You know that will be the true test of the you know testimony of the statement that they are making uh, with regard to you know Kashmir being India's internal issue. So this going and talking on TV debates and all that is one one part of it. That is that's all okay. You know we'll raise it in that forum, which means you know they're trying to say we'll raise it in the UN, we'll raise it in the international community. Those 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 things are you know uh, one part of it, but the true. Test would be to see whether they will let their soil be used against our country. So, we can, uh, so basically, uh, what we are, you know, uh, seeing as of now from Taliban is like two different talks. On one hand, they are saying that you know our soil is not going to be used by a terrorist organization like Jaish Mohammed and all these other people, but uh, uh, an association, uh, uh, but an organization that is actually affiliated with them, Al Qaeda says that you know uh, the way forward after uh, you know recapturing Taliban is to you know, reinstate the Islamic uh, law or Islamic rule in these other parts of the world and Kashmir was one of them. So uh, all this contradiction is happening. How India is going to now perceive it and how India is going to move forward in terms of diplomacy? Uh, because let's be very honest, uh, uh, I think a, a, a week back, uh, it was uh, the chief of defense staff, you know, uh, he also said this thing that uh, at, at some point of time, uh, our Taliban has betrayed India to whatever the talks were happening in Doha. They have actually backtracked back on them to a lot of extent. So how would India now go forward, though there have been talks between, you know, uh, 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 India's envoy to Doha and uh, Taliban uh, envoy that is there in, in Doha. So the talks are still happening, but how cautiously will India uh, go forward and plus in the light of new development that is coming in? India would uh, definitely continue to be very, very cautious, uh, Akash, because, you know, we've not had exactly a great, uh, you know, experience with them, you know, uh, 
you know, you always uh, keep going back to IC814, one thing, and Kandahar, uh, this one, because, you know, they were the ones who provided a safe haven uh, for all those, you know, hijackers and terrorists, all, all those people. So, uh, but there is always one thing, you know, the thing is, anybody you speak to, you know, whether there is a problem or not, it is always, you know, better to keep talking, you know, otherwise, you know, there, there's going to be this guesswork which keeps happening, you know, that uh, what are they thinking, you know, or they think, what are we thinking, and so we keep talking, you know, so that is the best thing to do at the moment, also. Why I said that, you know, it is too early to trust them or anything of that sort of, let them form the government once and then, uh, you know, le le let us see, you know, how, how they rule and, you know, how they open up, you know, because I just saw a statement by one of the spokesperson who said that, you know, our greatest uh, asset is going to be China, you know, because, you know, they are in financial doldrums. So, China is the one who's going to, uh, this one. so there are multiple things that we have to look at, you know, there's a Pakistan there, there's a China there, you know, etc. And, Taliban themselves have not been exactly very friendly uh, towards uh, India. Uh, no harm in, you know, continue uh, talking and things like that, safeguard our own interests and make sure, you know, most importantly, that their soil is not used as a launch pad against us. That is one thing. Otherwise, I don't see, you know, great uh, diplomatic ties between India and Afghanistan anytime in the new fu uh, near, near future because, you know, there are two players there, you know, which may not allow it to happen also. You know, one is China and the other one is uh, Pakistan. But let's keep talking, you know, our assets uh, need to be safe, our people need to be ev ev evacuated. And again, most importantly, is that every time we talk to them, we need to keep on telling them, we know the relationship that the Taliban has with the Jaysh Mohammed, and we know how Jaysh Mohammed has, you know, uh, you know, been absolutely uh, very, very difficult to deal with, and, you know, Pulwama attack or parliament attack, all these uh, kind of things. So the most important thing, you know, which we have to keep in mind here is, you know, See, Afghanistan is not going to be exactly problematic to us, you know, diplomatically or anything of that sort, you know, because, uh, you know, they have their own issues to deal with. But as I said that, uh, the whole aspect of, you know, deniability factor for Pakistan, you know, that has always been the case. Like if I go back to, you know, the days of uh, Simi or Indian Mujahideen, these are all groups that were formed by Pakistan so that, you know, you can't, you know, they don't want you to point a finger at them. Let's say that that is homegrown terror at the end of it. <coughs> Similarly, now if there is an attack which is launched from Afghanistan or something like that, you can't point back and say, no, this came out of Balakot or this uh, this came out of, you know, Rawalpindi or, you know, Lahore or Karachi, wherever. So that deniability factor is that what we need to be extremely careful about, that is uh, one thing, because our primary concern will always be these Pakistan proxies like, you know, Lashkar, Hezbul, and of course, Jaysh e Mohammed. Right, right, right. So, uh, uh, Vicky, uh, on that uh, note, I just want to uh, add one more thing that, you know, as these things are happening in Afghanistan, Pakistan has actually, you know, uh, set up an air base uh, just 10 kilometers very close to the border. So, how do you see that uh, in terms of a strategy point of view by Pakistan? These are all, uh, you know, kind of theatrics, you know, that is one thing to, you know, trying to, you know, prove uh, to everybody or tell everybody that, you know, that, you know, we still remain uh, completely in control of, uh, you know, Afghanistan and uh, all those things, you know. Uh, these are all, you know, what we call, see, I don't see that as any immediate threat or anything of that sort, but I would uh, definitely see that, you know, as something called as posturing, you know, which is uh, one thing. Saying that, you know, that uh, Baigiri, you know, which you talk about, you mm. know, saying that, you know, this is the country which, you know, will listen to us, etc. You know, because uh, Pakistan's once uh, sole agenda is, you know, that is, you know, the destruction of India. And that's why, you know, you say that Gazwat e Hind, the, this is the thing. So, this is all posturing, you know. The thing is, you know, you don't come and interfere here, you know. Pakistan definitely wants India to stay out of Afghanistan. That's one thing. And that's why all this uh, posturing will happen. And, of course, let's not forget that, you know, Pakistan is also, you know, the all-weather friend of China, basically. Exactly. So, you know, so there is a lot of... Uh, a uh, lot of posturing uh, which will happen there. I don't think, you know, we should uh, let ourselves, you know, get distracted by all this and continue doing what we have to do because it's most important that we protect our own interests first. Exactly. And very interesting point that you bring up in this whole conversation, the point of Gatsba uh, because that is one of the, not, not uh, very prominent uh, feature, but that is one of the features of, you know, radical Islamists. Uh, the Gazwai Hind, so basically the capture of the Islamization of the Indian subcontinent. So, do you feel that uh, you know organizations like Jaish e Mohammed uh, and you know Lashkar e Taiba and uh, the sleeper cells of IS, uh, Pakistan's ISI and uh, Al Qaeda, 
all these people uh, with because of the win of the taliban in afghanistan after 20 years are going to you know promote this kind of a pattern also uh, for uh, terror uh, activities in india this gazwa in the, which you know you know basically loosely translates into the you know destruction of india it is not exactly a new concept you know al qaeda had an arm called as the 313 brigade you know which was headed by one person called as ilyas uh, kashmiri okay so that was i think you know back after the mumbai 2611 attack you know the, the thing is these stories started coming up and that is uh, actually for the first time that i heard that term actually you know so it has basically been an al qaeda strategy you know because uh, ilyas kashmiri wanted to you know get into kashmir and fight this battle and if uh, what i have heard is you know uh, completely correct it was uh, it was the al qaeda's plan to you know carry out the 2611 attack but because there was disgruntlement within the lashkar e taiba and many wanted to go and fight in afghanistan at that time uh, the isi thought you know let this attack be carried out by the lashkar e taiba so that you know they have some you know common ground and they stay united so this is the kind of you know uh, bifurcation that you know the isi does when it comes to kashmir that is one thing this thing has been there uh, for very long you know the destruction of india that is one thing uh, here and there it has caught traction but you know it has not really you know what is that you know taken off uh, like the way they did but yes of course yes i mean that terminology will definitely be you know one uh, talking point one uh, recruitment point you know that is one thing one radicalization point all these things are there but it has been spoken of for a very very long time as i said is that the only worry is how this victory will you know boost the morale here because you know we are already seeing a little bit of enhanced activity in jammu and kashmir with you know jaish e mohammed trying to you know uh, recruit people etc you know use this victory as you know a, a talking point as a recruiting point etc so the tentacles are already out akash that is one thing but it's not something that we can't handle that's uh, number one point but it is definitely going to be a nuisance irritant value and uh, you, <coughs> sorry you need to have 24 bar uh, surveillance on these people you know the thing is done pretty well 102 terrorists down you know only this year alone etc we can't let this victory you know be used as you know a talking point out here and you know uh, people uh, start this up. and also with another issue is that you know uh, uh, 20 plus uh, members of uh, from kerala you know have joined the isis now that is another headache you know you, uh, some are looking to come back etc that is one thing so high alert at the airports one so all these you know it's a very uh, tricky situation and that's why i always say is that you know how friendly or non friendly they are if we have a channel open there to talk and they are also willing to talk let's continue to talk so that there is no guesswork in your head exactly exactly so uh, on the closing point i just want to ask your point of view uh, as of like uh, how do you perceive the new taliban government that is going to come into existence do you feel that you know uh, it is a good point uh, as far as india diplomatically is concerned or is it like going to be a uh, it definitely is not going to be the relationship that india had earlier with afghanistan with you know uh, hamid karzai or with ashraf ghani being into the power and a lot of infrastructure being put by india uh, there so how do we see it now um, as of the taliban i would say akash the thing is while the top leadership may have you know assured the international community that you know it's going to be a uh, taliban 2.0 and uh, completely different from what we saw between you know 96 to 2000 uh, i still feel you know why the leadership may want uh, certain things you know the economy to you know boom and you know the women to study and the women to work etc i uh, i really don't know whether they are cadres or you know they are foot soldiers below will allow them to function that way because you know many are there part of the taliban because of one particular ideology that they follow right. are they you know used to that soft ideology or etc I, in terms of india i would say that you know uh, these talks would you know continue to happen you know in doha etc all these places a lot of people in the international community are also talking to them france germany etc all these uh, people we also must see you know what role china is going to play in this you know because ultimately akash you know money is ideology at the end of it you know they have openly said that china we want china's money now when you have china's money you know that that deadly debt trap that you know china puts you into all all the time exactly. they want to put afghanistan also into that so a lot of things are happening 
what we need to do is protect our interests make sure that afghanistan is not used as a you know happy hunting ground for terrorists who you know attack us and ensure that you know whoever nationals are there whatever projects are there we are safe that's that's about it i mean there's not too much meddling that is there now for us to do in afghanistan well well on that note thank you very much vicky and let's hope that you know uh, uh, we have to first see that you know how the uh, taliban new government is shaped up or how does it look like and you know as they have said that there will be a participation by women also that needs to be seen so a lot of ifs and buts with taliban as of now very fresh uh, 15th of august uh, if i have to say we just like 30 days 15 days out of it uh we are thinking uh, way too fast of taliban let's wait and watch as you have always said well on that note thank you very much subscribe to one india channel and never miss an update